Discovery, the show and podcast dedicated to sharing all the exciting and enjoyable aspects of games and gaming. I'm your host, Victor, and I'm once again joined by my co-host, Ron. Ron, how you doing? What you been up to lately? You know, I'm doing well, as always. Uh, I'm keeping busy, just trying to fill the schedule and have fun when I can. Uh, how about yourself? Oh, I'm doing great. I am so excited to be here again with you. And I actually, I saved this for you. Ooh. Sweet, sweet new game oh. that I knew we have to try together. It's called Crab Champions. Have you heard of it? No. Okay. Tell me about it. Okay. It's like Risk of Rain, like level-based shooter or the roguelite. So for those of you that don't know, roguelike is where you play as a character and you go through, a, you try to beat the game in one go. If you die, you start over. A roguelite is the same thing, but each time you go through, you get a little bit of progression. So if this is a roguelite game where you play through levels as a crab that shoots things. It shoots things? It's three per third person shooter, you can have <laughs> shotguns, machine guns, orb launchers, rocket launchers. You go through shooting other crabs, giant ants, larvae. It's fantastic. It sounds wonderful. And the progression is you get new guns <laughs> as you go through. So we've been having a blast. You get different colored shells as well. And they're Oh, what I really love about it, too, is mm. there's these parkour levels. Mm -hmm. So you, you hop around as a crab on these. Crab parkour. Crab parkour. All right. So I thought the guns was wild <laughs> enough. but So I, I saved that to share that with you yeah, here, because it's fantastic, and I want any, everyone to play it. Yeah. I'll have to look. <laughs> we have to try it. For sure. It's up to four players. So. Oh, yeah. So yeah, what have you been playing? Oh, I've been playing some real, like, just brain-burning, like, eight-hour-long games in multiple sessions, mm -hmm. uh, and then breaking that up with a little bit of Magic the Gathering. Yeah. So not a lot of variety, but just keeping with things I know. Well, yeah, as a Magic player, I, like, I feel like there's variety in each game. Oh, tons of variety. Oh. What deck you pick, what cards you pull, it's... Crazy how much variety. You Absolutely, can get. and especially when there's four players and what we play, Commander. Mm -hmm. Every game's different. Oh yeah. But we're not ta talking about Magic today. We might. Uh, we might talk oh. about that. We can't do an episode without talking about Magic. R true. But what are we talking about today? Um, I believe today we're talking about how to start playing games, how to get into it. Where do I even begin, really? Yeah, how, exactly. We, th we had a starting point, right? And it, it, we wanted to walk back as a companion piece to our first episode of why we think it's worth playing games. Because obviously they're hooked now. They want to play. Yes. They loved our episode. Yes. They're like, Victor made some good points. Ron made better ones. I want to play yes. now. So <laughs> we want to use this as... Uh, in conjunction with that to help you get started playing games, get started playing again, help friends get into games. So we're gonna walk through some strategies for for those methods okay. of how, how we think it's beneficial, how we've helped people get into games. So with that in the tank, mm. I have a question. Oh. Do you remember the first game you played? Oh, wow. The first game I played, that's going back a while now. It's got to be either Monopoly, mm. Life, or like Candyland, or any combination of those. They just, you know, they were everywhere when I was growing yeah. up. Everybody had a copy of Candyland. Everybody had a copy of Checkers. Yeah. Like all of these like more ubiquitous, like just everywhere types of games. That's where I got started. Sure. Yeah. It's, that's really interesting, because I, I do have early memories of physical games, but my very first memory is actually a video game. Oh. It was, I think I was three, maybe, yeah. but this is when Power Rangers was starting. I was super hey, into it, you know? Good stuff. And they let me go hang out with the neighbor kid who had Power Rangers for the Super Nintendo. Mm-hmm. I was like, ah, oh, this is amazing. Yeah, I gotta love visiting the neighbor kids' <laughs> The place. neighbor, I never got to go there again. Never got to play it again, but it imprinted on me, and it, you know we're doing this now. Yeah, we have a game show. Look at that gaming uh, show. Gaming show. Maybe we should have a game show episode eventually. Whoa, eventually. Yeah, we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> we'll get there. Uh, so I wanted to talk about that right at the beginning, mm. so we can 
start thinking about our introductions to games, the things mm -hmm. that we liked, our fundamentals that got us here. Mm -hmm. But I think we have a disclaimer first before we get in the episode. That's right, Victor. And that disclaimer is take it easy on us. Uh, we might not get everything right. We're probably going to get some things wrong. But if you all could just have a little bit of mercy and maybe not crack down on us too hard, but we're here to learn, we're here to explore, right? As the title suggests, shared discovery. We want to learn with you. So everybody out there in the audience and us here in the mm -hmm. studio, just if you have any questions or any concerns or corrections, let us know. Maybe we can uh, have a segment yeah. where we read some of these out. We'd love to read some questions on the air, answering those for you at the end of episodes. We want to have these conversations with people. Exactly. There are things that in feedback we've gotten, conversations we've had, it's like there's already things that we, obvious things that we f feel we've missed, mm -hmm. or like epiphanies we had, oh wow. So yes. help us have those epiphanies. For sure. <laughs> and uh, that's what games are about, mm -hmm. is learning. So let's learn together. Let's learn these games and let's find some stuff out. Absolutely. So Ron, mm. where do we start? Where do we start? Uh, that's a great question. Where do you start? I started with family and friends. I think that's about where I started too. Family, friends, and every aunt and uncle. I come from mm -hmm. a big family. Every aunt and uncle and grandparent all played card games. Yep. So there would be a constant weekend card game activities where we'd be playing games, all the young kids and cousins and stuff, and then the rest of the family would be like hard charging poker and euchre yep. and all these betting games. and. It's just always there. I had the same experience, right? Mm -hmm. My family's probably not as big as yours. Maybe it is, but probably not. Yeah. <laughs> Could we gamify that? Yeah. But my grandparents, like we talked about this in the first episode, I played with my family, my friends. They yeah. exposed me to all kinds of games that helped me narrow down the style of games that I like. For sure. So that is our first point here is if you're interested in games, talk to your family, talk to your friends. They probably have games that they like to play, and if they like playing them, they want more people to play with. For sure. It's simple as that, is just talk to people, talk to the family, and uh, ask them for advice, really. Um, and then that will get you started figuring out what kind of games you might like or what kind of games you can even get people to play. Sure. That seemed that was always a big one is like, okay, I gotta play games that I know people will yeah. play mm -hmm. so that I can always have someone to play with. There's some sure. way to play and get that outlet. And the kinds of games are like board games, card games, video games, role playing, dice, like the list goes on. Yeah. In the previous episode we mentioned that there's something like eighty different distinct genres. Yep of games, and that's specific, board games yeah, specifically. specifically. It's not games. counting video games we, where they have the sandbox talked about and yeah. duh, 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 just incredible shooters, first person, mm -hmm. third person, uh, puzzle games. I don't know, it's just. That's all of them, right? Yeah, <laughs> huge. It's huge. Huge amount of that's different right. types. Yeah, and so when you're talking, playing with your friends, to playing with your family, they're mm -hmm. exposing you to the new games, Yeah, right? They're gonna sh play, have you, help you play card games, dice games, physical games. Mm -hmm. So as you play through those, start analyzing what aspect of those you like. Mm -hmm. right? Do you like the feel of the cards in your hand? Do you like rolling dice? Right? Do you like rolling a bunch of dice? Do you like having physical components laid out in front of you, like dominoes? Oh yeah. I played dominoes with my grandparents a lot. They actually exposed me to all kinds of games. They had dice games, card games, dominoes. They've Games with like a lot of physical pieces, right? I love train dominoes, mm. but I'm, I'm a sucker for train games. Yeah, so. yeah, played that all the time too, mm -hmm. right? And I loved dominoes because I'm like, oh, feels good to, like, what is that? Like a plaster? Like it feels so good. I couldn't even do yeah. resin, maybe resin something, but it feels good. So think about as you are experiencing this with your family and friends, mm. where you want to go with that, right? Because there's a lot of games in those uh, uh, card games, uh, 
pieces like uh, dominoes mm -hmm. and things that are like introductory games, sure. right? That'll get sure. you started on the path. Yeah. But they won't exactly be maybe where you end up. Yeah. And some examples would be uh, for lighter games yeah. that you could use to get people in or other people might want to play with you if they're already... Send it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll send it. Send it. Oh, uh, yeah. Hey, nice. All right. <laughs> Got a little style on that. But some good introductory games would be things like Carcassonne, mm. which is a tile laying mm -hmm. game where it's really simple. You pull a tile, you set it down, and you place a meeple, a little guy, yeah. a little wooden guy, right? Ticket to ride. You draw cards. You put together combinations of cards to build mm -hmm. rail lines across sure. America or whatever continent you want to yeah. play in. And, and I want to want to rewind a little bit. Oh, rewind so it. And tell them the definition of gateway. Oh, introductory games. Right. right. That's important. Before we jump in, because we yep. have we have a lot of them here. So, in the research as we were doing this, they use the term introductory or gateway games interchangeably mm -hmm. as games that are s simple, high novelty, low time, mm -hmm. but high fun, right? Oh, yes. And high mem memory. So like yes. you're going to make these huge memories. Like like here, Throw Throw Burrito is an example of that, where the gimmick is you play the game, and there are certain things that make you throw these these burritos. Adorable, adorable These squishy burritos. little little guys at each other, right? And so the introductory games are these, these nice high novelty games, and that help facilitate a an easy way in, yeah. right? And so gateway kind of has like a negative connotation to it, but it's really mm -hmm. just the games that, it's a good starting point. Right, I've heard them be sort of uh, pushed aside as like, oh, you learn that those aren't really mm -hmm. games or those aren't like worth spending a whole afternoon playing, but mm -hmm. I don't know, I've played hours and hours of introductory games, same. Now, like say my parents yeah. or, mm -hmm. uh, because that novelty and that yeah. fun is always there. You're always going to mm. get something fun out of playing Sushi Go, for example. Absolutely. It's just consistency. Absolutely. Is the key to them. And an example I have with that right behind you there is Five Minute Dungeon. I, that's right there. Yeah, that's a this game. Film? Yeah. Oop. <laughs> there goes part of the display. This, this is a game actually where. The, it's really on the nose right here. It's a chaotic, cooperative, real-time card game where you all work together with a five-minute timer to beat the dungeon. Too easy. I've beaten it a bunch of times, but sure. every time I pull it out with a new group, mm -hmm. I always hear, this is so fun. I, it re-sparks my interest in it. Yeah. Where do I get the game? Right. right. So I've had a lot of success with five-minute dungeons specifically. Yeah, and uh, a lot of introductory games like Throw Throw Burrito, I've seen that in Walmart. Mm -hmm. Easy to get. That's where Easy I got access. the dun five minute dungeon. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That's great. I, I impulse bought it, got it right away because I, I love that, that art style, and I was hooked. Right? But jumping ahead here, I think we have a oh. little, we won't talk about the hook just yet. Oh. But we have a few more examples here. I think you were talking about Ticket to Ride last. Oh, yeah. Train game, Ticket yeah. to Ride. Mm -hmm. You draw cards and then you create matches in order to create rail lines in various countries. Nice. It's a very competitive game, but in a lot of ways, it's not directly competitive. Mm. There's no like attacks or sure. doing damage to anyone or the most you can do is just get in the way of other people's play. Interfering. Yep, putting up walls, mm. limiting other people's options. Sure. That's all you can do. Nice, and we, we touched on a few of them, the party mm. games, yeah. right? We talked about Throw Throw Burrito, we talked about Sushi Go. These are games that are high novelty and good for in like party settings, oh, right? Yeah. When you're at, you're having a get together, a reunion, like a lot of these I play, like throw, throw burrito here, mm -hmm. you you have your four players and then you have 20 people watching you, laughing, having a good time with you. Yeah, oh yeah, or like Mario Party, you put on some uh, Rotel dip and then throw in Mario Party mm -hmm. and everybody can just drop in and out as they please. So I, I, I think these are great introductory games mm -hmm. because they're fun. They're, you're going to remember them. Like, we remember, like, another category of that we remember a lot are social deduction games. Mm, yes. And we pull these out at parties because these games can be played with, like, 
30 people. Oh, yes. The resistance, I mm -hmm. think, tops out at like mm -hmm. 14 or 15 people. Well, the max we've played with uh, Werewolf, I think, mm -hmm. where it was like 20. And wow. the concept for these social yes. deduction games is that there's one person that ha there's hidden information. Mm -hmm. There's one person that is the bad person, the then threat. The, the threat, and the rest of the people are trying to figure out that threat. Mm -hmm. So if the rest of the people figure out who the threat is, they win. If the werewolf survives through the night, through the game, they win. Oh yeah, and there's a lot of factors that throw up decoys or uh, false flags, mm -hmm. so people uh, go after the wrong person and. Yeah, so there's a lot of a lot of different variants of these social yes. deduction games, but we've gotten people who've never touched a game before because they it's like, oh this is fun. It's you, it's you, we're blaming yeah. each other. Oh yeah, oh. what's more fun than it? And all fingers. you all you need to do for those games is there's low piece requirement. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of them it's like it's a single card that tells you mm -hmm. what your role is. That's it. There's some you can even play on your phone. Play on your phone. You know, mm -hmm. everybody who has a phone. Everyone has a phone, yeah. And so social deduction games are mm -hmm. wonderful. And again, with the caveat here that these introduction ga introductory games, it's okay if you stop there. You were touching on this, mm. but if you don't want to play anything other than these party games, these gateway games, that's okay. Yeah, more than okay. That's awesome. That's a uh, bunch of people I know. Mm -hmm. They just play card games at the bar, mm -hmm. Oriflom, other little card games and things like that, which at first, they're introductory games. They have simple rule sets and simple ideas behind them, but the more you play them, the more strategies unfold, mm. more tactics, more ideas start coming to the surface and, oh, now I know how to play this game, but the game keeps getting deeper and deeper. Yeah, there's more depth to be found there, mm -hmm. even in some of these simpler games. You got it. And the term gateway, uh, gateway it's kind of tied to gatekeeping, mm. right? And gatekeeping happens in a lot of fandoms. Uh, most of them, I would say, yeah. Right, where Something you're not right. playing the games the right way, mm -hmm. right? And for board games or video games, you're not playing the more advanced games. Right, casual. I mean, you're a casual. casual. Casual is like a derogatory yeah. term. When, who, who cares if you're having fun? So mm -hmm. that's what we wanted to get out of the way here, is don't let anyone gatekeep the way that you enjoy playing games. That's right. So, Ron, we started talking about it before here a little bit ago before oh. we got into definitions, but oh. genres. Ooh, yeah. I think, so we looked at Board Game Geek, the, the website that mm -hmm. is the biggest hub of board games and card games, and we looked through all of their genres because we think that if you like a genre, mm -hmm. right, of an aesthetic, mm -hmm. that can be a good way to help someone get into games, or that can yes. be a good way to get into games, so we on that website, there's over 80 genres, so you can find one that works for you. And we listed a few here, right? We had mm -hmm. horror, sports. Oh, yes. I've played many an F1 racer mm. board game. That's really? Just... Is it good? Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. I don't... I don't know if I've played sports game. Or uh, there's a spin on football called Battle Ball. I've I seen that. that a lot I've when I was that. a kid. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, it's war games. War games. So many wars, so many war games. I know yeah. tons of hobbyists that are like uh, interested in history or mm. maybe a specific war or point in history, and they've got it. It's there. It's there. It, the, if you like this war, you can find a game about it. Right. Back to our educational piece in our last episode. Mm -hmm. Right. If you're a history buff, that's a that's often a good. Segway. If you know someone's history buff, like, oh, yeah. oh, what part of history do you like? That's how I yep. got into a lot of board mm -hmm. games is mm -hmm. I'm a big history buff. I wouldn't say fan, but I would say that I'm interested in it. And that interest leads into a lot of games. I mean, there's a few here mm. that are specific to that. Uh, genre as well. Nice. That mm -hmm. is awesome. And that's not typically my genre, mm -hmm. but I have been able to play war games with you mm -hmm. and learn things and still have a good time. Right. Right. Uh, mythology. 
It's another really popular genre yeah. out there if you're into into that. Um, I think the game Smite falls into this category. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Smite is a MOBA or multiplayer online battle arena. So. Nice. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> I've played a lot of them. So it is 5v5 typically, and in Smite specifically, you play as gods. Oh. From a bunch of different pantheons okay. across the world. So like Loki, yep. Norse stuff, Odin, mm -hmm. um, Zeus, yep. all this stuff, uh, Set, and like Egyptian gods Absolutely. too. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, across the pantheon. That sounds right? great. Play yeah. Wu Sun Wukong, mm -hmm. right? it, oh, a bunch of them. It's been years since I played it, so my knowledge is a little rusty, but I sure. literally learned a lot from that game about mythology that I right. had never known before because the game, every character has a, in their bio, it tells their, their lore, and there's a little video, actually, a two minute video telling the lore of their character. That's cool. Learning while playing right. in a battle situation. There you go, yeah. Pirate games, Ron? These have a secret place in my heart. I gotta say, pirate games are objectively good, right? Yeah. There's a Libertalia. You can't dispute that. So good. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, Sea of Thieves? Come on. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Get eaten by the Kraken. Who doesn't want to form a crew and go form get killed crew. by a giant squid, right? <laughs> like, it's fun. It's stressful. Yeah. <laughs> it picks you up. But yeah. It's a good time, absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, for all the One Piece play uh, watchers out there, there's a One Piece card game now. In addition to the myriad One Piece video games a and bunch all of that. Them. I, yeah. No spoilers. I'm getting caught up. No spoilers. No spoilers. <laughs> I can't even touch the games yet because spoilers. But yeah. it's out there. Yeah. Science fiction. Science fiction. Love to see it. Oh my goodness. Twilight Imperium stands mm -hmm. as one of my top mm -hmm. favorite games of all time and. It's just a huge war of science fiction mm. stereotypes and tropes and ideas. Just phenomenal. Political games. I think that blends into the war category. There's yeah. some overlap there. Yeah, like war is political and politics usually affect war and there's like in between periods and things. And I know Root is a really good political type. Yeah, tell of game. me about that. It's, um,. Sort of uh, introducing to a genre called counterinsurgency simulators. Okay. So it's a simulator, it's a history game, but it's got all these cute animals okay. fighting over the forest. And it's highly political, mm. where you're just constantly arguing with people over what should happen next. Okay. That, I love Root. I've played it every time. And it's like, if it didn't have that aesthetic, mm -hmm. as a flavor guy, like it's yes. gotten me to learn a lot about politics and political moving, movements, battling, and so that flavor can be a nice bridge in. Right. In, so. I think it was, uh, I don't remember who, but it's politics is just another aspect of uh, war, and war is just another extension of politics, right? Some guy. Some guy. <laughs> and uh, the rest of the games in that genre are completely drab and like, grids and uh, mm. uh, uh, spreadsheet. Spreadsheet simulators. S spreadsheet simulators. Yeah. That's a whole type of game sure. where they just don't even have visuals. Sure. They're just pieces with numbers and like some pictures on them. But mm -hmm. Root is one of the first in that uh, genre of counterinsurgency games that actually cares about what it looks like, right? And for someone who, like me, who cares a lot what my games look like, that has helped me get into a new type of game. Right. And it's normally one that's incredibly dry and complicated yeah. that you would never, I would never put one in front of you because you would <laughs> you'd just be like, get this out yeah, of Yeah, you face. were stoked when you <laughs> showed up with Root. Yeah. Let's go. Slammed yes. it down. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't know what this is, but it's cute. Let's yep. play. Exactly. I love that. Uh, I put this next category here oh. as movies. Right, a lot of mm -hmm. movies and mainstream media, like shows and mm -hmm. stuff, have direct game tie-ins. We already talk, talked about this with One Piece card mm -hmm. game, but with Star Wars card games, Dune, Game of Thrones has a pretty popular board game. And there's argument to be made that Dune could also be a book interpretation really? as well. Yes. Interesting. It was a book first movie. Yeah. 
and then a board game. So Yeah, exactly. So other forms of media, if mm -hmm. you like those, there might be a, a game for you. For sure. Right? Yeah. And then the last, probably my most, if you look around here, probably my favorite category, fantasy. Mm. Right? It's like... It's like an escape. I like I like fantasy, Dungeons and Dragons, mm -hmm. right? And I feel like fantasy has an aspect to it that's like universal. If you say fantasy, most people know like the basics, like the Tolkien, mm. like elves, dwarves, mm -hmm. uh, humans, halflings, right? Yeah. The basis of uh, Dungeons and Dragons is that exact yeah. like generic fantasy. Mm -hmm. And when I say generic, it doesn't mean like lame or simple or like not worth your time, right? It's just that's what everybody thinks of when they think fantasy. Yeah, the go-to. Yeah, the yeah. go-to. Yeah. Exactly. Like, like the pillar. Yeah. The pillar game. This is where it all starts. Mm. It's right here. Mm -hmm. So genres are a really good way when you're narrowing it down. This is all about narrowing it down, mm -hmm. right? Simpler party games, talk to your friends and family. You know if you like cards, you know if you like dice. Mm -hmm. So once you do that, look at genres you like, and then we have to talk about budget a little. I mean, really, everything kind of comes back to budget. It does. In one way or another. And we touched on it a little bit in our first mm -hmm. episode, but it's important to have a conversation about how you're budgeting. Yes. Right, so... You can spend as much money as you want on yes, games. But as someone who needs to eat, I have to be really aware of how much I'm spending on games versus food and all my other necessities in life, or else I could, I could very easily spend every dime I make on magic cards. Easily. Oh, yeah. <laughs> very easily. Very easily. <laughs> Even Dungeons and Dragons with all the minis, right? You have oh, so yes. much money. But we want to put say that there are a lot of people that have big collections, mm. but don't let that scare you if mm. that's not where you want to be. Right. Maybe that's where you end up over time. Like, this didn't happen overnight for us. Right. Happened over years and years, picking and choosing precisely, like, our, our budget of, we know, we kind of have an idea of how much we're willing to spend on one game, mm -hmm. and then if we like it, if we want to go deeper. And there's even an entire bevy, just a huge amount of free yeah. print and play games online that you can just, if you have a printer or access to a library mm -hmm. where you can do uh, cheap or free printing, you print them off and there's whole adventures and whole mm -hmm. stories that you can play with these printable games. Yeah, you were telling me about the diving game? It was the printable diving game? It's had a sweet name. Well, let me see if I can get it in one go. It's Bargain Basement Bath... Uh, Basement Bargain Bathysphere? Okay. It's one of those. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that, that's a memorable name. Yeah. What it... What do you do in that game? You uh, essentially, you get some dice around if you have some dice. Otherwise, they have ways that you can do random number generation. And you roll some dice, and you take this bathysphere in your mind and on the piece of paper deeper and deeper into the ocean to explore new scientific experiments and things of that nature. And it's a push your luck game. So mm -hmm. at any time you can go back towards the surface. Yeah. But if you go too deep, you might explode the bathysphere, mm -hmm. the submarine, yeah. or you might not have enough air to get back mm -hmm. to the surface. And after every round of play, there's upgrades that you can get, that you can purchase with your scientific experiments and discoveries and make your bathysphere more powerful and able to go deeper and explore new things. And after every single game, there's a new mechanic that's unlocked. Really? So it's constantly evolving and constantly wow. like intriguing you with novel and new things. And that's a perfect example of a very deep game, mm -hmm. of ever-changing game that you don't have to spend anything on. So mm -hmm. the he saying this here, that your budget can be zero dollars to as much as you want, but mm -hmm. figure that out soon, right? Yes. Uh, and we're bringing up the free games because that's a pretty good way to get started oh, yeah. where it's like, I don't know if I want to spend money. Mm -hmm. So we're bringing up some free options right. here. If you can't spend money, you can't know, spend a bunch money. of reasons to play a free game. Absolutely. And so that's a really awesome one, print and play games, but local game stores are fantastic for this. Yes. And local game stores are just a fantastic resource overall for 
helping your friends get in and you getting in because local game stores a lot of them that i know will have sections with opened games they mm. they just encourage you to go try yeah. play spaces mm -hmm. and then the games there's all kinds of games mm -hmm. all varieties and then the game store owners have a lot of advice oh yes so if you have the genre say you picked out horror mm -hmm. you're a horror fan you love horror movies you can say, are there any like popular, easy to get into horror games? And they'll be like, yeah, try the, the Spooky Mansion game. Yeah. <laughs> the Haunt on Hill House, I think that's called. That game's sick. Yes. Right? That mm -hmm. You all start out on the team and you work through this, uh, this mansion, building the mansion as you go. Right, falling into traps. Falling into traps. And then at a certain point, a monster shows up and one of the players becomes a monster. That's a cool feature. It's a sweet feature. And yes. there's like, 50 different monsters, so every game's a little different. So if you like horror, that's an easy that's, one. that's an easy one yeah. to test out. So talk to your local game store owner. Mm -hmm. Try out the local game stores. I think they're awesome resources. Yeah. And I know for a fact, my local game store, when they have... Send it. Send it. <laughs> when they have new games, they might like charge you a few dollars, like five dollars, to get mm. in and try this sure. brand new game, and then whoever wins gets to keep the game. Oh, that's so fun! Yeah, that's so cool. And another uh, uh, little addition to game stores being yeah. a great resource is libraries. Yes, a lot of libraries at high schools, colleges, public libraries actually have a board game like board games and card games that you can check out. Oh, yes. I know my library has every single board game I could think of, just free to check out and try right there in the, in the library. Yeah, it was really, really amazing how mm -hmm. I learned this. I was at, at Ferris going to school, and mm -hmm. they're like, you want to go play Pandemic in the library? I'm like, oh, you have a copy? They're like, no, you can just check it out. What? Mind Wait, power. I don't have to buy this? It was sweet. And we did that a few times throughout the semester. It was so cool. And so I recommend that as a way. Mm -hmm. Right. And I ended up out of that. One of our friends that I was playing with ended up mm -hmm. buying Pandemic. There you go. Right. So use that as a way to try games that you're on the fence about mm -hmm. or look interesting and then say, decide later, maybe you want to buy it or maybe someone in the play group wants to buy the game. Yeah. There's a recommendation for you, Pandemic. But uh, what about uh, other free places to get oh, into games? Oh, yeah, we were talking about um, maybe there's like game bars. Mm -hmm. This is more of an adult option, mm -hmm. right? But there are bars that literally they have like a game side and a bar side. And they'll oh. host trivia nights. They'll have game walls. They'll have yeah. tables where you can play. Oh, yeah. You know, a lot of like... Magic the Gathering players will just set up at tables like that. Mm -hmm. That's super cool. So try those out too. Mm -hmm. You might end up spending money on food and stuff, but you don't have to buy the game. Right. You don't have to spend money on food right. and stuff. <laughs> and one of my favorites is if you don't have games, maybe uh, your friends and family yep. do. Yeah, we've been talking about friends and family the whole episode. Yes. Uh, we have a lot of friends in our play group who've never bought a game. Never, ever. They play with us all the time, but they're like, I know you have it. And I'm like, I'm happy to do that as long as you're playing games with me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Right. So check out with your family and friends. And that's how I played games most of my life. Right. My grandparents bought it. My mom brought me games, oh, yeah. as I've been saying. So mm -hmm. that's another free option All right. for you, not for them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we have a. We want to give some advice here. We've been talking to a lot, a lot about brand new players, how mm -hmm. they can narrow it down, how they can find the game that fits for them. So they're right. not overwhelmed by the 140 games on Board Game Geeks. They're not overwhelmed by Steam. Right. Actually. I, I did want to touch on this too. Mm. For those video game players, I think Steam's an awesome resource. Yes. Because over time, it will curate a list of recommendations for you. Mm -hmm. Every time I log in, it's like, here's a game that you think you, we think you might like. That's how I found Crab Champions. <laughs> That's great. It was like right in my face in my recommendations because it'll see the genres you like, see the playtime that you have, what you play, and it'll curate it. And that's how I found a lot of games, actually. It has a lot of other tools where it'll give you a list of games. It's like maybe on the fence that you might want to try. Mm. So you can train that algorithm on what games that you will yes. try and you want to play. 
and it'll... creating the algorithm that works for you. Yeah. And that makes me think of Steam actually has a trial option. Oh. Right back to our budget, if you play a game for less than two hours, no matter the price of the game, you can return it. Yeah, or under two weeks. Two so weeks? Okay, those yep. are the two caveats. Mm -hmm. Two weeks and two hours. So if you want to just experiment with games in two weeks, two, under two hours, I've done that for quite a few games, actually. Oh, really? I'm like, eh, this didn't really hit. Mm -hmm. Just some games that we tried to play as a group. We were looking for new games. I'm mm -hmm. like, eh, that's not for me, guys. Sorry. And that's not a big deal. I found, I found a lot of games I do like to play. Oh, yeah, and we're not trying to disparage other, like, the launchers and like platforms to buy games it's just steam is the first and foremost it's what people mm -hmm. will probably know uh and it has that return policy yes. where i'm not sure things like gog or 2k have sure those policies this is just what we're most familiar with yeah, exactly if you're more familiar with a different launcher mm -hmm. you have another way to search for games mm -hmm. we just wanted to give an example of one method that's worked for us exactly. to find games. Right. So that being said, we want to give some advice to the enfranchised players, mm. the players that are trying to help get their friends mm -hmm. to play games with them. Okay. Right. Because a lot of this has been brand new players. So let's, right. let's talk as we said. Not everyone's a brand new player. A lot of mm -hmm. people are watching. It's like I've already played, you know, WoW for my whole life. Mm -hmm. I, how do I get someone to play WoW with me? Yeah, right, something like that. So we wanted to give some give some advice here, and I think uh, this first one is very important. Ooh. patience. Ooh, yeah. Be very patient as you are teaching mm -hmm. people the the games. Right, some games can be overwhelming. A lot, of, a lot of games can be overwhelming, especially for brand new players. Oh, I know for a fact a few of these back here are just, I would never put in front yeah. of a new player yes. or some enfranchised player, some people that like want to play games. Mm -hmm. I would never put these in front of yes. them because they're it's just a different type of game. Mm -hmm. They're different. They're throwing a lot of concepts at you that if you haven't seen before, can be a l way too much. Mm -hmm. Just crazy cognitive overload. Yes, yes, and a common phrase for that mm -hmm. is like redlining. Yes. Right, when you're like, you get to that point where you're like, I don't care, I don't wanna think anymore, this is too much. And you wanna try to avoid that. Uh, it's not always possible, mm -hmm. and people are gonna get there while you teach them. Yes. So take a deep breath, because if you're getting anxious as you teach them, you're getting frustrated, that's gonna translate to them. Mm -hmm. And I've had experiences where my frustration was blamed on the game, right? The teaching, oh. and then they didn't wanna try it anymore. Mm -hmm. It's like, ah, so take a deep breath, know that it's gonna be a lot, know that they're gonna be asking a lot of questions. A lot of questions, some more than others, but you just have to Stick with it, yep. and don't lose your cool. Yes, that's a very good way to put it. Don't lose your cool. Stay chill. Yep. <laughs> it's a game. I, I added this one recently because mm. I, I found this has worked for me mm -hmm. as giving players autonomy and choice early in the teaching process. Mm -hmm. Right, As soon as you can, as soon as you can give them a choice that help impacts the game for them, that's when I do it. So a lot of games that I play will have a character you play as, a commander, a hero, a party leader. So what I'll do, for example, we have these here. These are commanders in magic, right, for okay. decks. Yeah. And when I teach someone magic for the first time, magic is complicated. It's one of the most complicated games out there. So. You can lose someone in the weeds, right, in the denseness. So I'll just hand them the stack of cards, like pick the one that's the prettiest. Pick the one that you, that stands out the most to you, yeah. right? And as they learn the rules, they might change that, but I gave them a choice early. And what often happens too, by giving them that choice early, they imprint on it. Like, mm -hmm. yes, this is mine. And this I like how that calls back to our previous episode of like self-expression. Mm. You're putting that self-expression. Yes. You're asking them Very what good they think is mm -hmm. cool or the best. Yeah, obviously. and they'll be like, well, no, I chose this. This is mine. And then when they good things happen in the game, it's because I chose this, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what I really like to do is give them choice, 
early and try to find ways to give them rewards throughout the game. Mm -hmm. So like in Magic specifically, if they did a really cool thing, if they attacked someone, mm -hmm. did a bunch of damage, like wow, point that out, yes. give them the feedback, say so that was awesome. Mm -hmm. So I, I love that point and that has had a lot of success for me. Mm. Interesting, interesting. Because I, I know I've had some players that like, no, I need absolute information mm. before we even start, mm -hmm. and like that can be a little difficult to handle. Sure. But it goes back to the patience, patience. right? Mm -hmm. So you just need to be patient. Be like, look, trust me, I'm teaching you a game. Yep. We'll get there. You will be a master eventually. Absolutely. Eventually, take a deep breath. We're gonna take a deep breath together. Yep. Go with them. Don't throw it at them. Yeah. That's that's a big piece of mm -hmm. it here. And so the next point here, which it's kind of the point that we've been talking about throughout the whole episode is mm. experimentation, mm -hmm. right? If they don't like a game, they want to try something else, that's okay. They don't like this specific genre of game, try something else. Walk through it with them, right? Maybe you can walk them through Steam. Oh, yeah. Walk them through Board Game Geek. Mm -hmm experiment with different things, right? And, and it, that's okay. I've had games personally where mm -hmm. I'm like, that's not it for me, guys. I, yeah. I'm i 10 minutes in and I'm, it's not hooking me. Oh, one of my examples earlier of like a gateway game, mm -hmm. Carcassonne, you and me, like we played one game and you're like, ah, I don't ever really want to play that. It. I play it for the group <laughs> yeah. and I don't ruin the experience. Exactly. But it's not my style of game and that's okay. That's okay. Mm -hmm. And we all have games like that. So understand that that's going to happen for you. That's going to happen for people you're helping to play mm -hmm. games as well. And there's thousands of games, millions of games. Mm -hmm. Like just keep going through. Keep Figure trying. Going out. And another facet of this mm. is right, experiment with types of games but mm. experiment with play styles in games. Mm. That can be a little harder. That can be harder if they're not into the game, mm -hmm. but I've also had success. I'll talk about magic, because that's what I teach people a lot, right. where it's like, you didn't like that play style? Let's try one more time. This style is very different, and mm -hmm. I think that aligns more with your personality. Right. That's a big part, too, is yeah. each person is different, so you got to teach based on who you're teaching to, mm -hmm. and that can be difficult. Absolutely, because the first, you want their first exper uh, like experience to be perfect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you want it to be great, but that's not always gonna be the case. And if you have a player who's patient with you, mm -hmm. and willing to try something else, I've, had, I've also had success with that. Mm -hmm. So Magic, for example, has five colors, right? I don't want to mess this up. Uh oh. <laughs> no, I don't. Okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to show you because every magic card has it on the back here. Yes. So it has white, blue, black, red, and green. And if you ever forget that, it's right there. I, I didn't need to do that, but I think it's cool to point out. Right. And each color plays it fundamentally differently from the others. Yes. And I have, there's different color combinations. There's 31 color combinations in the game, right? 31? 31. So that's countless different play styles. Yeah, exactly. So that, that being said, if someone's willing to give it another go with you, there's so many different ways to play just magic, mm -hmm. right? But again, if they don't want to give it a go again, try a different game, and that's okay. So experimentation, the uh, scientific process, if you will. You got it. You got yeah. it. <laughs> process of elimination. Um, and Guess and check. Like you said, matching experience level is huge. Yes. Oh, mm. yes. The experience level. Some people have experience with just all sorts of uh, crazy rules and things, even mm. in their normal everyday life. Like as someone who runs a company is not going to have the same inclinations or starting level as somebody mm. who is doing something completely different. Right? Absolutely. Different interests. Uh, you're doing spreadsheets every day. Maybe you want to play a game that's like a spreadsheet, mm -hmm. you know? There's just something to be said for that starting level. Yes, and ask a lot of questions, mm. right? Where are you at? Because sometimes you have to peel back the layers. Mm -hmm. right? A lot of times I've had this conversation, do you play a game? Well, no. no. 
I'm not talking about video games. Do you play any game? Oh yeah, I love to. Uh, I love to play this party game. I love mm -hmm. to do horseshoes. I love to do this kind of game. So peel back the layers, because a lot of times the first notion when you ask someone if you play games is video games. Right. Or they think like, oh, games are a waste of time. So. I don't really want to fess up well, to it or talk yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, there's like a it's stigma, embarrassing. Yeah. social stigma to that. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of what this is too, is reducing that social stigma. Right. And the stats back up that there's truly not a stigma again to if like 66% of Americans play games. Right. We're all doing it. We're all doing it. We don't have to hide it. No. It's so to be ashamed of. ask a lot of questions mm -hmm. to the people, and that will get you to the experience level. That'll get you to the genres they like. Mm -hmm. That'll get you to the play styles they have. Mm -hmm. Right. So back to Magic, there are play styles that are really aggressive. Mm -hmm. You play cards early, you fast, and you punch. Yes. And then you just go to town. That's red. That, and then there's more methodical play styles where you sit back. Observe the board. Patience. Control is what this is called. Control styles where you remove threats, you draw cards, and you take your windows. So try to ask the questions, see where they're at. And we added this one here. I think this is a really, it's a way. <laughs> I'm uh, not going to say a good way. <laughs> I wouldn't suggest it. We wouldn't suggest it's it. Highly coerced. Don't do it. Yeah, don't coerce people. Like. Yeah. Unless that's part of the game. Unless it's part of the game. Like, you don't maybe get some consent before be, you play that you kind know, of a game. Like blackmail? No, don't. Don't, no, don't no, do that. No, 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 you don't no, need no, to be no, blackmailed. We don't know. No, nope, mo move. That's, uh, <laughs> we're not going to recommend you do crime. No, not at all. No. no. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ron, we've talked about, <sighs> I think we've touched on some successes. We've touched on some failures. Yes. But do you have any specific examples? Uh, successes, failures, helping people get into games, get back into games. Well, um, I've had plenty of failures trying to get mm. my parents into games where if it's anything above like Bananagrams, like Ticket to Ride, mm. they don't really want yeah. anything to deal with it, like, do with it. It's like Sushi Go, they love. But mm -hmm. if you try to get them to play Root, for example, Nah, get out of here. Yeah. Or a failure with trying to teach you Carcassonne. Sure, you learned. I did. And you know how to play the game mm -hmm. and all that, but you probably wiped it from your memory banks <laughs> and you never want to play Carcassonne again. That's Sure, that's a failure, but like that's not on me or on anybody, really. It's just a taste. It's but it, let's bang. see. Is that a failure, though? Because I learned a part of game, a game style I like. Yes. And we experimented mm -hmm. to to say that maybe I don't want to play Carcassonne in that style of game. Right. So in some ways it's a failure, in some, some ways, ways it's a success. Yeah. And that's a lot of these uh, teaching experiences. Is you're aiming for that perfect teach mm -hmm. experience, but you're never going to get it, right? There's mm -hmm. going to be parts they don't like, parts they like, and sometimes, sure, they liked the game, but the parts they didn't like outweigh what you're trying to do there. and they won't want to play it again. And that's fine. Like we've said before, it's totally that's fine okay. to fail because there's always another success around the corner. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. If you're patient, there's a success around the corner. Right. I've wanted to play the counterinsurgency genre of games mm -hmm. forever because I am really interested in that mm -hmm. sort of like, uh, you know, uh, modern warfare type of stuff, right? Like yeah. tons of people are interested in modern warfare and all yeah. this, but there was no easy access point. There was no way I could get anybody mm -hmm. to play these games that are essentially spreadsheets. Yeah. But then I said it before, I'll say it again, Root came along and yeah. just, that's it. That's it. I got so many people to play now, these counterinsurgency games, and I'm incredibly happy with the success, right? Yes, a lot of failures to find the success. Yes. Because you were patient enough to wait till that game came along. Right, and keep my eyes out. You yes, know. yes, that's that's awesome. Mm -hmm. I've had a lot of successes, and I'm gonna keep referencing magic here mm -hmm. because I think I've had a lot of examples here. Mm. And with magic specifically, I one of my biggest failures was not matching where they're at. Mm. Right. It's easy to do. Giving them too much. Mm -hmm. And one for one example, played the game, taught them, let's go. Yeah. But we kind of just stomped them. 
we just defeated them re too much. They couldn't do anything in the game. And like, I don't, if that's gonna happen, that's not the game for me. Right. It's like, ah, man, I should pull my punches, right? Mm -hmm. That's another strategy. It's like, I should have pulled back. Let them get those early successes that we were talking about. Right. Right, like, mm -hmm. give them good feedback, give them early wins, and that, and that game, specifically really wasn't that for them, and that person hasn't played Magic again with me. I'm like, ah, dang, I lost him. It's it's the worst when you know the moment where you lose like, the person, ah, and you're like, if I could no, only go back, yes, it, I know they would love it. I know, I, unfortunately, I had a big failure um, in teaching that person, but out of that failure, I've learned a lot of lessons on how I can teach other players. That's good. And well, the big lesson that I had there was um, pulling back. Yeah. You, you don't have to teach them everything at the beginning. Mm -hmm. You don't have to teach them every single rule. That's impossible. I don't even know every single rule in Magic. No, and there's some games <laughs> that, yeah, uh, thousands of pages of rules. Yeah. Like, there's no way. There's no way. Teach them what they need to know to get going. Teach them and then along the way. And then find a sweet spot where they can feel like the decisions that they're making matter. Oh yeah. And in that game, it didn't matter. They didn't get to play lands. The one creature they played got destroyed. I was like, ah, oh, man. So I think this kind of ties into patience, pull back. Mm -hmm. And uh, recent success with Magic was taking those lessons, taking the lessons that we have here and putting those into practice. Mm. Teaching what I need, right, teaching what need to get them going, mm -hmm. hand them the cards, say what what art do you like, Right. ask questions, what play style do you like, mm -hmm. and then give them a challenge, like we didn't pull back completely, <laughs> right, threw some punches, but we, we pulled back and didn't go completely all out, right. and they were able to have success in that game. Right, like if there's m more experienced players in the game, well then, it just makes sense to go after them or target them mm -hmm. with some of the more nastier things Absolutely. or more difficult things and sort of leave the new player alone so that they can uh, be in their own pool and kind of mm -hmm. swim around and get a feel for the situation before you, you know, unleash your full might on them. Yes, you <laughs> and you know you succeed when they ask you to play again. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes, they love yeah. to hear that noise. You know they're hooked when you get them to play again. So mm -hmm. we were gonna talk about that a little bit. The hook mm. of a game is just mm. like a short little sentence yeah. on the front of the box that, or a little catchphrase that you can tell someone about the game. To, and if they start asking questions, you know you're good to mm -hmm. go further. It's like, this game takes five minutes and we work together to beat a dungeon. What do you think? Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. That's hooked. That's good. Yeah, a so, conflict of little animals in a forest to decide who rules. Like, whoa, sign me up. Let's go right. deeper. Let's go. Right? And so that's some of the successes, failures that we've had. And to wrap up here, I think we just wanted to grab a few games All right. and just talk about when we pick up a box, what are we looking out for on the box that makes us want to pull out our phones and look up reviews? Right, because right. every box has something similar here. Mm -hmm. So let me, let's just grab one here, right? Okay. I'll grab Munchkin. You grab one, I grab one. Yeah, yeah. We'll go with this big guy. Because <laughs> oh, this one has lies on it. That's oh, it does. It. Okay, that's a very good example. Oh, yeah. So every game is going to tell you the, uh, the number of players, and, and typically, you're gonna, you're gonna look for the length as well. Mm -hmm. There's typically a uh, length here. So up here it says the age and the number of players, three to six. And then you're gonna look at the art, decide if you like the art, and then look for what style of game it is, right? So Munchkin here, I know that it's a card game. Mm -hmm. That's, I like card games, and for this example, it's a show that I like. Awesome. So you're going to look for this section here. So one to two hours, three to six players, ten and up. I like Adventure Time. I like card games. Not too big. That's another thing. Look at the size of the game. Yeah. Right? How much space do you have? 
have to store these. Mm -hmm. that's, that's huge. I'm yeah. running out of space, personally. <laughs> I, me too. I don't know where I'm going to put new ones if I get them. So Ron, tell me about Mage Knight over there. OK, so Mage Knight, it's a Czech uh, Vlada Chivadl. It's like kind of lower uh, quality, but the quality comes in the actual game itself. Mm. It's really good. It uh, has all the components listed on the back, yeah, which that's I know huge, this. right? So if you, if you look at the contents, there's mm -hmm. going to be contents, there's going to be a components section. So Adventure Time Munchkin here has mm -hmm. 168 cards, eight character cards, one die, and instructions. I know this isn't going to be too much. Right. And you like card games? It says there's cards on yeah. there. Well, let's play a card game. And it's kind of small. That's mm -hmm. true. So. Compare that directly to Mage Knight, wow. Yeah, this huge list, right? It's got miniatures, it's got mana crystals, it's got dice, it's got cards, 240 cards, it's got tiles, it's got everything. It's like a, a veritable feast of board gaming. <laughs> and just looking at these, comparing these two, I think this is pretty funny. So 168 cards, 168 deed cards, eight characters, uh, eight central tiles yeah. and a die. And then it's like, that stops there, keeps going. We know this is going to be a dense game. Yes. We know it's going to take much longer than this, but we're also looking for the same thing on every box. One to four hours. So this is where That's I want to get lie. into the lies. That's the lie? Okay. Right? Is one to four players, sure, but one to four hours, that is a straight up okay. bold faced lie. Okay. This is going to go for four to eight hours. Oof. Usually I say if everybody knows the rules as well as you can, because this is one of those games that has tons of yeah. rules, if you know the rules as best you can, it's two hours per person. Whew. Whew. That's yeah. huge. That's dense. Oh, yeah. So that doesn't match up exactly. No. Right? Maybe that's actually the one player time. Right. <laughs> yeah, that would be a great way of putting it. That's a one player time. And then ages 14 and up. What 14 year old do you know <laughs> would get into this monstrosity? We tried, but we, then we just played D&D. &D. Yeah, it's on the same <laughs> so level as learning Dungeons and Dragons. When you're looking at games, think about the complexity you want. Think about the number of players. Mm -hmm. Think about the art. And then once you're hooked. The art. Right? Like maybe you look at Mage Knight and you're like, that art is cool. But you flip it over, that's too much. Right. I, I don't want to look at the review. But you look at Munchkin and you're like, OK, I'm going to pull out my phone. I'm going to go to Board Game mm -hmm. Geek. Right? And we recommend checking the reviews with the game that you're playing. Yeah. And a couple, you want to try a couple more examples here? Oh, sure, Let's, why not? Yeah, so I actually want to touch on a party game that we talked about. Throw Throw Burrito here. All right. Right? Let's hear it. Oops. Oh, my goodness. Are you throwing stuff around? I am throwing stuff around because it's Throw Throw Burrito. It's Throw Throw Burrito. <laughs> so uh, this party game. I'm looking at it. I know the art's good. These burritos <laughs> got me hooked. Ooh. It's a dodgeball game. What? Right? So this is Indoors. the hook is that this? we're looking at. It says the age. It says party game. It says number of players. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, let me flip it over here. Okay. <laughs> Flexing burrito. I'm looking for the description here. Party game unlike you've played before. It's a combination of card games and dodgeball where players go to head, throw burritos at each other. This is definitely <laughs> unlike anything I've played before. <laughs> right? <laughs> so it tells you right what it is on the box. You know that there's not going to be too much complexity. Is this the game that you're looking for for a party night? Man. Right. Yes, I would say yeah. This yeah. is great. Absolutely. These burritos are softer than I thought they'd be. <laughs> They're, yeah, you're throwing them at each other's faces. You, know? <laughs> you want them to be squishy. Don't want to lose a tooth. <laughs> so we just wanted to go through that. So when you're looking at games, you know what to look for, you know where to look on the box, and you know what you want to find to go deeper. Mm -hmm. But Ron, I think that wraps us up for the day. Look at that. We're done. We're done with another one. Mm -hmm. So. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, let us know. Shoot us an email, shared discovery at shared discovery show at gmail.com. Ron's working on getting the Twitter up. Be up any day yeah. now. Send us those those questions, leave us comments on YouTube. We wanna we want to be able to answer your questions live. I think that would be awesome. That would be a blast, yeah. And let us know what you think fun is. 
right? Is that we're going to work on that. We want to read that out. We want to get to the bottom of fun. <laughs> uh, we want to give a shout out to BCTV for allowing us to put on this awesome production. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're the best. Keep it real. I think we got two to send, Ron. Two to send at two once? Two to send at once. I might need to hold on to this yeah, one. Hold on to that one. Okay, one. I still so, have lines. thank you for joining us for episode two of Shared Discovery. As we close, please make sure to have some fun, be kind to each other, play some games. And Ron, you want to send us out? Riches must be divided, but real wealth can be shared. All right. Thanks, guys.